Hi everyone, this is Ben Ryan of Hedgeye's Macro Team and we wanted to discuss volatility and more specifically implied volatility. We use this a lot of different market signals all the time uh, in macro shows and early looks and, and different kinds of products and it, it does start to get a little bit complicated uh, and we w really what we want to do is, is simplify it and give, uh, give you a framework um, to reference when you hear us talking about this uh, going forward. So starting off with, let's talk about we're going to focus more specifically on implied volatility, but then we're, let's, let's frame it up by starting with realized volatility. And volatility really, to, to simplify it, uh, simplify it as much as possible, really when we talk about volatility is we're talking about the stock, stock price, price action getting from point A to point B. So if the, stock, if the st price of like a stock goes from uh, 30 to 40, well, yeah, you know that it went from 30 to 40, and you know, you, you, you know what, what kind of change that is, but you also want to look underneath the surface and figure out, well, what kind of, what kind of trading action, what kind of trading ranges, uh, what kind of volatility ultimately did it take to get from point A to point B? And that kind of tells us a lot about investor behavior. So starting off with the realized volatility, when we talk about realized volatility, we're literally talking about, we're talking about what's happened in the past. What did, what did, the market, mar, what did market action look like getting from point A to point B? And we, already, we can see that. We have insight into that. We, we, it's already behind us. We can study it. And then you think about this idea of implied volatility. Implied vol volatility is ultimately giving us insight into what investors think about volatility moving forward. Uh, it's not necessarily, not necessarily a directional view, but it says, hey, well, based on what's happened in the past or based on the sum of everyone's opinion and derived through the price of options, options prices, uh, that expire in the future, here's what the market thinks volatility is going to be in the future. And, uh, he, and this, is how it's, this is more or less how it's calculated. You, you, you have to go to listed options markets and you, have to see, you look at the price, the price of options. So if a stock price is at 10 and you see that the price, you, look, you can look at the price of an option going, or the stock going to t say $12 and there's a volatility assumption embedded in that, the price of that option. And, that, and that's kind of ba that's backed out of market prices. So it's really it's a model based it's really a model based uh, input derived from option market prices. And that's there there are a lot of different kinds of of, uh, of options pricing models, Black Scholes, uh, some variations of Black Scholes. But that's really what implied volatility does is it's giving us insight into what's going on in the future. And that's derived that's derived from the the actual price uh, of the option. I think it's probably easiest if we just explain this visually. So we, we have drawn this before, but so let's look at this implied and realized relationship. So if this is volatility on the y-axis, and this is, pri this, this is uh, price on the x-axis, so let's call it time, time and, and volatility, and say this is time now, this is, this, is, this, is, this is where we are now, and this is volatility. Right, so we can look at it. We can see in the past. So if you come to if you come to today, we have an idea of what volatility was in the past, and that's easily calculated. We we already know that. That's that's this is uh, this is market action that's already happened. So then what you can do is you can look at the price of different option strikes for for uh, contracts that expire into the future, and then you can with a model. It's using a, this is all model based you can back out what's this, what the implied volatility assumption is. So that the market's expectation about volatility, because if you, if you take a step back and you go forward, if you're, pricing the, if you're pricing an option moving forward, you need a volatility assumption. So you need a volatility assumption to put into the model to decide to, to come up with the, a, to drive a price. So what implied volatility is doing is we're, really, we're, we're going backwards. So we're starting with the price, and then we're, ta we're solving for volatility in that model. That's what implied volatility is. So again, what this does is simplify is it gives us insight into what kind of volatility is expected in the future. You know, so if, volatility is a lot, if implied volatility is a lot higher, that tells you that what's embedded in market prices is that market participants expect that volatility is going to increase. It's not quite that simple, but that's how you can, that's, that's, that's how you can think about it. That's, you really have to have that base that base pack in your head to start thinking about it this way. So what we tend to do is we study the rates of change. You know, how does this, how does implied vol change day to day based on what's happened? And, and so that's what, when we talk about implied volatility, it's forward looking. We're talking, we're, we're trying to come up 
with a market expectation for what volatility is going to be in the future. And what you typically see is that the market tends to chase what's happened in the past. So as volatility starts to pick up, so does implied volatility, and often implied volatility expands faster. So what, what this, this, is a, this is a pure market, market uh, sentiment-based indicator. It's easy to track. It's, it's, very, it's very transparent, and it's something that we look at on a daily basis. And we prefer this over, over surveys and other, other uh, more opaque uh, types of market sentiment, because this is really, I mean, this is literally, these, pre these options are being traded in markets, and it, it forces people, anyone that's buying and selling an option, it forces them to, to take a stance on where they think volatility is and where they think volatility is going. So it's a, it's a great, great indicator, and, I, and uh, that, that's what we were hoping to get out of this, just give you, give you kind of a base pack that you can go back and reference, uh, and we hope, we hope that this has been helpful, and if, we, if, if anyone does have any further questions, you know, obviously contact us and we can continue to try to, try to explain the process. Thanks for joining us.